Welcome to OG Benchmarks. This video describes my first experience with an OEM mini PC. These are truly amazing little devices. I bought this system some months ago. It is a Lenovo M72E tiny PC. This particular one was only about $50 on eBay. That includes shipping. And unlike many of these PCs, it did include the power brick. Of course, there might be a few reasons this PC was so cheap. A, it's an old system from the Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge era. B, it has an incredibly weak Celeron in it, a Sandy Bridge Celeron. C, it has a storage drive, but it is just 8 gigabytes with Windows 7 SE. That is a special bare bones version of Windows 7 that mostly pulls resources from the network hence the tiny SSD. Regardless, this is a complete, fully functioning system and ready for some upgrading. I will note that this PC came with DDR3 1600 RAM. The Sandy Bridge can't handle that speed, but apparently Lenovo shipped all these LGA 1155 systems with DDR3 1600 in case this system shipped with an Ivy Bridge CPU. Let's open this thing up. Hey, look at this little guy. It is so small in hand. The case is held together with just one screw in the back to the right. Remove that screw and the panel facing the camera slides off to the left along with the front bezel. The case slides open pretty easily to reveal the inner workings. So the cover has slid off to the left. The left is the front and the, right, the rear I.O. is to the right. The upper left is the SSD. This is almost certainly not the original drive for this system, although it is the original OS. As we'll see, the RAM is under the SSD. The CPU is under the cooler fin stack in the bottom left. The chipset is hiding under the fan in the bottom right. The SSD is now out and flipped upside down. The SSD is held in a caddy with two screws. The SSD caddy has a mount for the speaker. The speaker itself is now hidden below the caddy. You need to be careful to remove the speaker cable from the motherboard, this tiny header, before completely pulling out the caddy. The speaker cable is not very long. We now have a clear view of the RAM, there are two slots for RAM, and with the system being so small, the system requires laptop RAM sticks. The cooler heat sink is now removed. The cooler heat sink is held in by four screws. These come out very easily. I like this heat sink because it has a nice big plate that contacts every bit of the CPU. Note that there is nothing mechanical in the heat sink. It just has a fin array for airflow and the heat sink itself. Pulling out the case fan reveals the chipset. So the fan is an exhaust fan. The case has negative pressure when the fan is running. The only way for air to get into the case is by coming in the front on the left and passing through the fin array over the heat sink on the CPU. Warm air is then drawn into the fan over the chipset and exhausted out the back. It's a simple design. The motherboard is now out. The case does have four rubber feet on the bottom. If you look at different eBay listings, you'll see that most of these rubber feet are trashed. Two on this case have survived, and the other two were just rattling around under the motherboard there in this picture right in the middle of the case. Note that this motherboard has a thin mini ITX design, but it does have a proprietary layout does not strictly follow the thin mini ITX standard. Here is the bottom of the motherboard. It has a plastic layer mounted on the bottom. Presumably this plastic layer keeps anything from shorting out against the bottom of the case. There isn't much room for proper standoffs in this little system. The black squares are squishy foam pads to keep anything from rubbing in the case. Here is everything reassembled. I put in a 128 gig SSD so I could install Windows 10. I also swapped out the CPU 
for an Ivybridge CPU, an i3-3240T. This is just a 35 watt CPU. Every single one of these Lenovo Tiny PCs were shipped with 35 watt CPUs. All T-Class CPUs, which was a new line with the Sandy Bridge generation from Intel. The i3 I'm putting in does not have a turbo boost, so this is truly a flat 35 watt TDP chip. In some models, Lenovo did use the i5-3470T, which has a 35 watt TDP plus a turbo boost. So this cooler is designed to cool above 35 watts. I'm curious to see what the thermals are like in this little case with its tiny cooling solution. Is there any meaningful airflow? Let's do some benchmarking with Cinebench. I'm less interested in the scores because they will be bad and more interested in the power and temperatures. Ambient temperature was 24 C. For the i3-3240T, idle CPU power was just 3 watts, idle wall power was 15 watts, and the idle CPU temp was 40. During the single core benchmark, CPU power draw was, according to hardware monitor, about 10 watts. Wall power was 24 watts. We hit the proper CPU clock speed for a 3470T at 2.9 gigahertz, and the CPU temp got up to 60C. Great. During the multi-core benchmark, CPU power bumped up to 15 watts, and wall power was 33 watts. We again reached 2.9 gigahertz, and the CPU temp shot up to 71C. Everything looks fine, but I will mention this is a 35 watt CPU. Apparently, despite being a 35 watt TDP CPU, it only requires 15 watts to hit its full clock speed. I did not expect that. Can the cooler handle 35 watts? I won't find out with this CPU. Okay, let's see a CPU with a little more power demand. I swapped in a low power Sandy Bridge CPU, the Xeon 1260L. This is a 4 core, 8 thread CPU with a 45 watt TDP. It also can turbo. I don't know its top power draw. Its clock speed is a bit lower than the i3, 2.4 gigahertz versus 2.9 gigahertz. Initially I turned off the turbo in the BIOS. So ambient temperature is again 24C. Idle temp was 43C. Idle power was 5 watts and 18 watts from the wall. During the single core benchmark, the CPU power was 14 watts with 29 from the wall. The CPU hit its target clock frequency of 2.4 gigahertz with a CPU temp of 64. Perfect. Nothing throttling. Let's go to multi-core. Immediately, there was trouble. The CPU power started at 35 watts with the expected clocks of 2.4 gigahertz. But then the temperature rose to 73. At that point, the CPU drop power dropped to 22 watts. The wall power dropped as well. And the clock speed crashed to 1.4 gigahertz. There you go. In my opinion, this CPU cooler can't handle a full 35 watts of power. I did go ahead and turn on turbo in the BIOS. Here are the numbers. No surprise, more throttling, both for the single and multi-core runs. Note that 73C seems to be the key temperature for throttling for the Xeon. So what are my conclusions on this tiny PC? Well, I don't think the cooling solution can handle a 35 watt CPU. It seems fine up to 20 to 24 watts, but after that you start to see throttling. Does any of this matter? Probably not. This is not a gaming system. It's an office PC to run email, Word, and Excel. Realistically, this computer will never see sustained loads. I do love this tiny PC. It's smaller than anything I could build myself, even a bit smaller than a thin mini ITX system. 
And of course, this Lenovo is essentially a thin mini ITX system, but in a proprietary format to allow further size reduction. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. I don't exactly need another Windows PC. Maybe I'll stick some Linux distro on it. I hope you enjoyed this teardown and benchmarking of one of Lenovo's tiny PCs. These can be picked up for very little on eBay and are lots of fun to tinker with. Please consider subscribing, leaving a like, or making a comment. Take care.